breakfast at Fish and East Fish in Frisco. I'm your uh, cordial, usually, host, Mike Fisher, as we get you ready for another Cowboy Week. Week two in the NFL, uh, the dark clouds have to break, and you have to make them break for yourself. Now, the Cowboys can then play Cincinnati Sunday here at AT AT&T Stadium, and we'll be here, and maybe they'll lose 19-3 to again with Cooper Rush as the quarterback. But for now, and for your mood and your approach, you can make your own dark clouds break if you want to. That's just an old Uncle Fish suggestion. I got three things for you this morning. That's right, three things. Uh, And then we'll head over to the star. Mike McCarthy of 1030. We're on the field shortly after that, watching practice. We'll be in the locker room after that. Uh, Bree Amaranthus and Richie Witt and yours truly will all be hanging out at the star today. So come see us in the noon hour if you want to uh, if you want to say howdy. Also, of course, tonight, Cantino Laredo Fish at 6 live in Frisco, 121 and Legacy. We're giving away all kinds of stuff. Uh, we'll do the show live. We'll leave the camera on. Then we'll diddle dock around and give you uh, T-shirts from the fish store. Thanks to Broken Halo for that. Uh, maybe I'll give you my triplets print that I painted. Maybe I'll give you my 88 Club print that I painted. Maybe I'll give you my... Roger Staubach classic that I painted. Uh, There's a few of those available tonight. So get there, 6 o'clock, and uh, let's talk Cowboys. Three things this morning. Thing number one. We have talked about how one of the major problems in that game was the inability to get open by the wide receivers. Uh, C.D. Lamb, obviously, is the headliner here. That's the guy that... uh, that this franchise through Dak Prescott and, and other ways has announced he's he's going to be Devontae Adams. He's going to be Cooper Cup. He's going to be Jefferson in Minnesota. By the way, C.D. Lamb, friend of the show. And so Pristine Auction is uh, allowing all of us to have a chance to win a C.D. Lamb signed full-size flash alternate speed helmet. Get $10 off your first item. One, use code FISH when you sign up. There's the link for Pristine Auction. Thanks to their friendship and fellowship. So uh, Todd Archer at ESPN asked the ESPN Stats Info team to go go give me the numbers on separation. And again, we measure everything in football now. I watch film. This very popular T-shirt you can also get in the fish store. There's the QR code. And there's a computerized, I'm sure it's imperfect, but there's a computerized way to measure separation in games. How open did a wide receiver get? Among the 87 wide receivers with at least three targets going into Monday. So this is Sunday numbers. Simi Fihoko actually got open. He was ranked 20th among receivers in the NFL for finding a way to get separation. All right. Noah Brown ranked 31st. Okay. Dennis Houston ranked 67th. There was 87 guys in this category. Dennis Houston ranked 67th. In other words, Dennis Houston didn't get open. CeeDee Lamb ranked 69th. CeeDee Lamb was the 12th worst receiver, not the third best receiver, the 12th worst receiver in the category of getting open, separation. Now, we can dissect and diagnose a lot of reasons for this. Is the problem that Dak Prescott throws to you when you're open as opposed to throwing you open? is the possibility that CeeDee Lamb simply had a subpar game. It's absolutely possible. Uh, There's every reason, if you want to be optimistic about this, that you think CeeDee Lamb's going to catch seven passes for 100 yards and and a touchdown this weekend. That's completely conceivable. He's young, he's developing, and he's done that. And maybe... The other concept here is that the other team's just better than he is, that the guy covering him is just better than he is. What troubles me is I could swear sometimes the guy that's covering him was a smallish safety. That can't happen. Well, I, I, let me tell you, it can't happen twice. Now, Stephen Jones, COO, goes on the fan and says, basically says, yeah, CD's got to step up. 
To which I counter saying, yes, but the coaching staff has to also step up and find a way to get him the football. And the front office should have stepped up so he could have teammates who could get open. <laughs> Item two, we've co uh, covered now and chronicled now Jerry Jones's announcement that we're not putting on, uh, we don't think, we're not putting on IR Dak Prescott because of the possibility that he could come back faster than what we were told originally might be eight weeks. So now you're looking at maybe October 9th against the Rams. Maybe. So that would be missing four games, right? I don't have the schedule in front of me. That sounds right. Jerry says, uh, that's not being an optimist. As I said last night, it really would be football malpractice. If Jerry said, Dak, we're going to pretend you're coming back in four weeks when we know it's eight. We're going to waste a roster spot just because we want Cowboy fans to maintain some enthusiasm. As I said last night, Jerry brings that on himself. Your cowboy cynicism has been earned, but that that's so ridiculous. It's so preposterous. I refuse to believe it. And as one of the astute fish heads last night said, 55,000 of us, by the way, here in Cowboys Nation among fish heads, thank you for that. Uh, when we're done with this program, if you'll please uh, hit the button that allows you a free subscription of what we do here. Valuable prizes can and will be yours, including the CD Lamb signed helmet. If it was all about that, if it was just about just about attention and tickets, not that it's, and believe me, we'll get there, not that it's not in large part about attention and tickets, as I coined the phrase, sometimes it seems like a marketing company that plays football on the side. If it was just about attention and eyeballs and headlines and ratings, they'd sign Cam Newton. Easy as pie. You, you could say they wouldn't sign. They, what about Colin Kaepernick? The, the idea that Michael Irvin has laughed off. Colin Kaepernick hadn't played for five years um, in at least one of his two semi tryouts. Our understanding is he just didn't throw the ball very well. He, he didn't look very viable. But, and, and then obviously you have the political thing, which the, the NFL has basically apologized for, but it still lingers out there. Cam Newton... All you got is he likes to wear uh, uh, ladies' hats with feathers sticking out of them. Now, he also doesn't throw the ball very well. But the last time we saw him, he was a, uh, except in Carolina. I take that back. The last time we saw him as a full season, full-time starter, which is two years ago, he, he couldn't be stopped as a red zone runner. So there was something there. But if Jerry just wanted to sell tickets and get attention, he would simply sign Cam Newton and put him on the practice squad. They, they need a third quarterback. They're going to go get somebody's body. They're going to get another Will Greer or, or a better Ben DiNucci, as if there is such a thing. So since you're just looking for a body to be on the practice squad, because you're not going to go get a starter who's better than Cooper Rush. And by the way, in the four-week window, even if you got Jimmy G here, assuming that you think he's better than Cooper Rush, and the assets you'd have to pay for him and the $7 million salary. It would take him weeks to get ready to start. I mean, they can't even get offensive lineman Peters ready to start. So by the time a Jimmy G was ready to start, Dak, maybe, would be back. And the whole effort would have been wasted. So Cooper Rush is your starter, and it's going to stay that way. Unless it's a gigantic flop and or... The doctor says, Jerry, forget this four-week thing on deck. That's not happening. So if, it's, if it was an eight-week thing and a gigantic flop, then you could look at the possibility of chasing another quarterback. But, of course, by that time, it's going to be record-wise almost too late. And the idea of tanking will start to seep in and be justified in doing so. Let's say this about Cooper Rush going forward. Uh, as the numbers, the, the odds on this thing have changed drastically, as I'm sure you've noted, uh, you can check those out at my bookie. Go look at my bookie. There's the link right there. Use the code FISH22. Uh, you put in a big pile of money and they match it. What? As you can see there. 
I better be specific before somebody says, I, I put in a big pile of money. No, you can see what I'm saying. Fish 22 is the code. Let's say this about Cooper Rush versus Cincinnati. The quarterbacking bar at this moment in Cowboys history is set awfully low. <laughs> in other words, Cooper Rush against the Bengals is not going to be worse than Dak was. And that's not being harsh. That's being, that's, they scored three points. Brian Wright's got a bunch of criticisms. They desperately need veteran offensive linemen. And they'll be, I don't know about veteran offensive linemen, but they'll be making an offensive line move maybe today. They have the whole offseason to find a kicker. I know, maybe they found one. By the way, no, guys, I don't think they should sign uh, Blankenship, who just got cut by the Colts for missing a 42-yard field goal so he can compete with Maher. Things are going fine with Brett Maher right now. Why upset that apple cart? Uh, why didn't they go get a wide receiver? They went to the dollar store. Uh, yeah, Brian, all these criticisms, criticisms that you bring up are, are valid, and we've addressed them in depth here. We've tried to explain most of them uh, as best we can. Uh, I'm kind of tired of having to explain Amari, Lyle, and Randy. We've got, we, we wrote volumes, we wrote books on it on CowboysSI.com and talked about it here too. If you don't know why those three guys aren't here, go Google it. Amari, Collins, Gregory, Fisher, SI. As I've said a few times now, and I think this needs to set in stone, it's not that they were wrong for getting rid of those three. They were wrong for not replacing them. Jimmy Herring, Uncle Fish Premium member. Hey, how can I become Uncle Fish Premium? Ask the fellas, they'll show you how. Fish, the Cowboys are making no moves on quarterback. They're throwing in the towel after week one. No, I, again, I just explained. That the number of guys that you could bring in here who could get ready to play in time to really make a difference is zero. The number of guys you could bring in here who are substantially better, they're backup quarterbacks that somebody else would let go of, who are substantially better than Cooper Rush, that's not a long list. You know, there, there's only 32 of these guys. Now, me, I'd call Chicago and say, you guys aren't using Andy Dalton anyway, are you? Send him down here. Andy Dalton is better than Cooper Rush. I think Jimmy G is better than Cooper Rush, but the price would be too high. San Francisco has reasons to think, no, we're, we're keeping our backup quarterback because we are a playoff contender and he might be our starting quarterback next week. Whereas in Chicago, even though they won, they're, I, I don't think that they really think they're going anywhere. And I think they would just soon take the value for Andy Dalton. That's just my guess. But it's a short list of backup quarterbacks who are going, oh no, that guy, that guy had roll in here and start in week one and be way better than Cooper Rush. So, no. And we report, we told you this on Monday, what their plan was. And now you know more about why. There, there is not going to be a blockbuster move at quarterback. But again, if you want to make a blockbuster move just because you Jerry wants attention for the, for the club, you, you could make one for free. Cam Newton, million dollars practice squad. Would cost you nothing, give you a body, and sell a million T-shirts. And they're still not doing it. Item three, the Cowboys, in a way, won on Sunday. What? We're going to get to a bunch of your questions and comments here in a moment as uh, we have seven more minutes in the program. Seven minutes. 25 million viewers, the largest season opening game viewership in the NFL in seven years. That was 2015. Guess who played in that game? <laughs> yeah, that would be the Cowboys. That was Cowboys Giants. Remember when the Cowboys played the Giants every year in, in, for the first game? So seven years ago was the only time in recent history that there's been an audience this big. 
the Cowboys get their 25 million viewers, Cowboys in the NFL and the Buccaneers too. And so, yes, if you're a Cowboy fan that's going, that's all that Jerry really wants. You're wrong that that's all he wants. But Jerry himself said, uh, Mr. Sean, Mr. RJ, if, if we're getting on all the headlines and we're being written in all the journals, we're doing our job. No, Jerry, you're doing, you're doing what should at best be 49% of your job. Shadow, what about the drop passes? I, I didn't see a lot of that. I didn't, guys weren't open. The, the Cowboys receivers and their quarterback in this game weren't better, weren't good enough to be better than the Bucs. They weren't good enough. Uh, Brian's in here uh, starting some fun arguments. I doubt that they care as much as you think. I don't know how you know that, Brian. Uh, they, they, there's no evidence that they don't care. The evidence about the Joneses is that they care about the other thing an awful lot. Joe Rakes, Cooper Rush looked bad in preseason. Eh. I don't know where the well-thrown balls were in this game that you guys are talking about. I didn't see them. Pastor, every backup quarterback in the league made it through waivers. That's correct. Meaning every team has a Will Greer and they're all the same. Adam, Fish, I've noticed once this person decides they don't like somebody, whether it's Cooper Rush or Skip Bayless, they, they never will again. People do get, they, they, they get their backs up against the wall sometimes with their opinions and they, then they won't back down from it. Uh, in the case of Cooper Rush, I would like to think the Cowboy Nation looks forward to being wrong. That the Cowboys win against the Bengals and then Cowboy Nation goes, yeah, well, that was pretty good. That was pretty fun. In the case of Skip Bayless, this, this isn't about me trying to, to back up some empty belief. He's a bad person. Dangerous for my industry. Really. Uh, I doubt that that's what caused Michael Parsons to go AWOL on Skip, but I'd love to think it was so. Ro, Gallup will be back this week. No, he won't. Doubt it. Bass, doom and gloom of all I'm seeing. And I'm trying to provide Bass, if I can, a mixture of, of really what's going on here, be critical of things that have fairly earned criticism, but at the same time, uh, not be enough and much of a slapdick to say things like, you know, Kellen Moore doesn't understand football or, you know, George Edwards is an idiot. It, these things aren't true. The, these things are, are opinions formed by somebody as uh, the subscriber said a moment ago. Somebody decided a long time ago that they didn't like this coach or that player. And so they, they're stuck there. Now, uh, Dale Hansen, good friend of the show over the many years, and Dale, who always had a, uh, I got a twinkle in my eye when I say that. I'm smiling when I say that. Uh, Dale always understood that, that, that he was always kind of just having fun with it. But Dale would say, he would tell me that one of his policies is if he issues an opinion and it turns out to be wrong, he doesn't care. He's going to stick with his opinion because it's good TV. And that's okay. As long as you're winking into the camera a little bit. MDJ, what happened to everything runs through Zeke? Game script changed that. Had that game stayed within range, maybe they keep giving it to Zeke. Had that been six to three for the bulk of that game, game script might have been different. Zeke might have gotten more carries, 5.2 yards per carry. But once they got down 12 to three, it seemed like they were trying to climb a mountain. David Webb makes a point. You're not the first person to point this out, David, so I'm going to give you uh, some some gravitas here, Uncle Fish Premium. Right after the national anthem, the camera went to Dak and he was nearly in tears. He didn't look right. Now, David says he looked scared. I got another guy that just said he looked nervous. And of course, what we need to do, and Dak knows this way better than we do, he lives it. If these evaluations are true, you obviously got to take the nervous energy and funnel it somewhere good. 
And that didn't happen in this game, obviously, for Dak Prescott or much of anybody else. Joe Taylor, y'all blaming Dak? No, I'm I, I got I'm blaming uh, about about fifty one guys. I don't think I'm blaming Zach uh, among players. I'm not blaming Zach Martin. I don't think I'm not blaming Micah Parsons. But y'all blaming Dak is not accurate. The lead item on this show is CD, the C.D. Lamb problem. That, that's the lead item on this show. And C.D. Lamb is a Dallas darling and a friend of the show. And I'm giving away his autograph helmet. And I'm still telling what I believe to be factual about why he had a poor game. <laughs> Garas, what about Minshew? Minshew does not come in here and soon enough prove that he's better than Cooper Rush, nor can he really establish... Uh, I mean, it'd be a matter of opinion. Is he really better than Cooper Rush? And then there are people that think, I don't, I don't, I don't like Minshew in the locker room. There are people, people say that. Pastor, Zach Martin didn't have a good game at all. I don't know. I watch film. Pastor, you tell me. You go, you go watch the film and tell me. I, I am suggesting to you that I will take Zach Martin every week and I'll take Micah Parsons every week and I'll put them in the NFL's top 100 players every week. I'm comfortable with that. I don't know who my third guy is right now. Uh, I, I think Diggs would say he wishes he'd have played better. He'd sure like one playback. That might be your next candidate to be in that group. Can't put Tyron Smith in that group, right? There's no evidence after game one that you can you can, should say CeeDee Lamb's a top 100. According to this, he's not even a top 69 receiver in terms of getting open in week one. AV, I think we need to quit being armchair psychologists. I love your point because it's so difficult. I Somebody the other day said, well, I know that guy can coach. I've seen it with my own eyes. So what, what value is that? What value is your eyes? You're, you're seeing all the coaches. Why are your eyes picking out that coach? So it's the same thing when we say, I saw Dak in tears, he looked nervous. There, there's no way for us to know that. And so, yes, while it is a little unfair to play armchair TV psychologist, it's also kind of part of the sport and kind of part of the fun. Mr. Ricks, I know you're tired of me saying this. No, no. It's a witch hunt for the fans. People are fed up. There's no logic. There's no common sense. There's no rationality. Just blame, blame, blame. That's a good one. When a team loses, we're just throwing a million darts against the board, saying it's his fault, he sucks, fire him, sell the team, burn the stadium, leave town. You're right. Brian Harden, I am a fish head. I know. Dollar, trade for Malik Willis. I don't think Tennessee agrees with your idea. Joe, what about Fitzmagic? He's busy planning to drunkenly jump through a table in Buffalo when they win big. No. And, and again, when you guys are bringing Romo, I hope you're uh, you're laughing. Frank the Tank, after 30 years, we're frustrated, Fish. Now, it hasn't been 30 years, Tank. It's been 27. Will, wouldn't it have been proven now if we could win with Dak? You have one with Dak. You went 12 and five last year with Dak. It, it, it has actually been proven that you can win with Dak. Reginald, Fish, just admit it. The Cowboys organization screws up. Just admit it. For, I thought about this this morning when I was rolling out of bed. I was almost prepared for this. Fish, the Cowboys, you're on the Cowboys payroll. Go watch my Monday morning Breakfast at Fishinies, which was so expansive with funneled, angry analysis that instead of starting at 7.20, I started at 6.20. We did an hour and a half show on Monday morning in which we let her rip. Harsh and fair. And that that's going to, on my gravestone, when somebody says, Fish was on the Cowboy payroll, he's a homer. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just have that. You're going to be able to press a button and hear the 90-minute show on Monday in which I take them apart in 
fair, angry analysis. Adam Young, $5 pitch in. What about in-game adjustments? Jimmy did this. I will frankly tell you, Adam, that players have told me, playing for Jimmy and beyond, that most of what you do at halftime is drink some Gatorade, get an IV, and change your shirt. That's what most guys are actually doing at halftime. But I will give you this, Adam Young. Thank you for the pitch into the refund. Uh, in my in my first pop into my head thought on how the Cowboys do in the second half, coming out of the locker room with an opportunity to make halftime adjustments, do the Cowboys come out and look better to start the second half of the game? And in my just at the top of my head, I think, Adam, I think the answer is no. Ongo Gablogian with a dollar fifty pitch in just for the fun of it. Ill, half of these people don't know football. They're just posting mad, stupid comments. Uh, I think you're going to find, Ill, when you hang out here, that this is going to be a group of the 55,000 smartest and most passionate Cowboy fans in the world. But, yes. Sometimes, sometimes we're coming on here just punching a pillow. You're right. Voodoo. It's crazy that Mike McCarthy doesn't know anything about the offense. Yeah, that would be crazy, wouldn't it? <laughs> Can we trade Kellen Moore, says Dollar. No, you cannot. Fire Kellen, says Andre. Not today. Not today. AD Big, Fish, read my first pitch in. This is my fourth. Doggone it, AD. There's a $2 pitch in from AD. And I miss his comments. And I promise, without ruining or slowing down the program, there's there's AD with a $2 pitch in. Golly, AD. How did I miss you? Maybe we should come up with another system for the pitch ins into the brief fund. Because I, I'm obviously so busy doing this program. Oh, AD. Doggone it. Now I can't find you up top. If somebody, uh, somebody yell at me at what AD's question was and we make sure we get to it. Uh, are we looking forward to the draft? Th that's, it's always a fun media fan joke. All right, who are we drafting? Um, but that's not really how you're looking at it. You are making your plans right now, right? To be at Cantina Laredo tonight at six for a live fish program. I've rented out the banquet room. Let's go. You are making plans to watch Cowboy football on Sunday, right? Alex, Dr. Jerry, and Mr. Cap. Now we're coming up with some headlines, with some nicknames. Now we're talking. Cap Boy is juvenile, but Dr. Jerry and Mr. Cap sounds like the name of a sounds like the name of a horror movie. <laughs> Dr. Jerry and Mr. Cap. That's good, Alex. Thank you. Daniel, was Jalen Tolbert that bad? He wasn't good. He didn't do anything all summer. Joe Taylor, just play Will Greer. He deserves a chance. Yeah, there's no deserves, unfortunately. Not how it works. Mikey, Fish, thanks for taking us off the ledge. David, we cannot throw in the towel. You certainly hope that the team doesn't. And... At, after week one, I don't really understand the fun of a fan doing it. I wouldn't. If I was you, that's not what I would do. Zeke, is Jerry upset with the negotiations with Dak? So he's trying to prove he can, making him prove he can win without any help. No. No, they are not trying to sabotage Dak. They're not trying to sabotage Mike McCarthy. They're not setting themselves up to fail. They're not coming in to the season trying to tank on purpose. All bullshit. None of that's true. As the great Judge Judy likes to say, if it doesn't make sense, it's probably not true. Rush, I'm saying Gallup is better than CD. You're wrong. Andre, fans should wear a paper sack. No, because then your mother won't see you on television. Kevin, how about Peters to tackle and Smith to guard? I don't care which one they do. As long as Peters gives the Cowboys a yes when they ask him today, are you ready to go? He needs to say yes. 
And he needs to go out there, in my opinion, uh, at 80% or whatever he is and be better at 80% than Farniak is at guard, at, at left side offensive lineman. And I believe he will. Reza, what are we going to do when Cincinnati stacks the line and dares us to throw the ball? You might possibly lose by seven. Ongo, $2 pitch in. Zeke means Kellen needs to give Zeke more carries in the game. There's no way of knowing that had Zeke, like I know we like to project, he had 10 carries for 52 yards. So if they would have given him 19 carries, he would have had 100. I don't know that it works that cleanly, but game script took the Cowboys out of that plan. Sean Shelley, $5 pitch in. Fish, I'm a Kellen fan, but if we don't execute at a high level and clean up the penalties, doesn't matter who the coach or coordinator is. Right? Except who is responsible in part for cleaning up the penalties? And how wrong is Kellen when he says, well, if a guy gets a penalty, what we have to do is we just have to pull him out of the game. <clears throat> pull him out of the game and do what? Play with 10? Joel, $5 pitch in. Fish, do you think Dak looked nervous because there might be more to the shoe and ankle story from earlier in the week? I do not think that, but I think it's a great question. Here's the thing, though. He had all day Friday and all day Saturday to work through it, and I'm told that his work on both those days was full. So uh, I, I think it's a great question. And I think the answer is no, that ain't it. But is there a way, first of all, I don't know that Dak's going to be media available this week, but is there a way to pose that question to him? Maybe I'll try. You looked particularly emotional before that game. Was that related to shoe? Was that related to ankle? Was that related to your brother, your mom, America's team, Sunday night football? Rob, will you please report today if Peters is practicing? I do assume he'll be practicing, but we will indeed be at the star watching practice and we will report it. Jared Bogarty, folks, please hit the like button. That does beat the algorithms. It tells Cowboy Nation that we're here. <clears throat> Jason, does Dak's development get hurt by Kellen? I've certainly heard people say, well, it's too bad so-and-so isn't coaching him. Guys, they have seven quarterback coaches here. You'd think one of them would know what they're doing. And I know that this media guy might like that coach and that media guy likes that coach. Who's a good assistant coach and who's not a good assistant coach is not determined by media guys. Sorry. AD, my first pitch in. What about Josh Johnson off the practice squad? I think he's better than Rush, more experience. Thank you, AD, and I appreciate you fighting to get in here. How do you find a guy on somebody else's practice squad who comes here in time to really help you? How long would it take and AD, you like Josh Johnson. I, I don't see what you, I don't see the, your your affection for him, but fine. If Josh Johnson, they claim him off waivers, I claim him off the practice squad. He comes here, they sign him. Okay, he's obviously he's not doing anything this week except learning the playbook and run around, right? Then Cooper Rush is a disaster. Is Josh Johnson your starting quarterback in Week Three? Extremely doubtful. Cooper Rush probably keeps the job, even if he's a disaster. What if he's a disaster again? Now it might be Will Greer time. Is there any reason to think that Josh Johnson or anybody else on most anybody else's practice squad is better than Will Greer? There's no evidence of that. Michael Evans, $5 pitch in. What's the chances that Mike McCarthy takes control of the play calling? And if so, the chances of him changing the offense. Well, they won't change the offensive terminology because McCarthy generously, when he first came here, said, let's leave the terminology the way it is for the benefit of the players. Of course, now he's getting made fun of for having done that. The suggested being that since it's not his terminology, he doesn't know what's going on. Michael, Mike McCarthy is the best play caller in this building. Period. Certainly was three years ago and still is now. The issue, and I appreciate the question because it's a smart one. If I'm in my car with my son and it's my car and I see that he's about to steer us into a tree, I'm grabbing the steering wheel. I'm going to try to save us. 
with my hands on the steering wheel. Okay? In this analogy, obviously, Kellen Moore is the student driver, which might be a little unfair, but compared to Mike McCarthy and his accomplishments and his stature and what's at stake, because see, here's the thing. If this all goes to shit, Kellen Moore will still get another job. What is he, 33 years old? Now, he won't get a head coaching job. Smartest guy in the room or not. Uh, not in the NFL. He, Kellen, Moore, Kellen Moore is young enough to rebound from this. Mike McCarthy will be 57-ish or so. Now, to me, 57 is young. <laughs> but teams will not be knocking down Mike McCarthy's door if this goes wrong this year to ever be a head coach in the NFL again. That would be the reason that Mike McCarthy would think about grabbing the steering wheel. Dean Graham, I hope we get a wide receiver. I don't have a bunch of hope in this offense scoring 21 points without a defense will carry this team until it's addressed. And can this defense, this is one of the things we'll talk about later today. I'm going to walk you through the four points that can help the offense get it done. But can the defense carry everything for a month? D.B. Cooper, Bengals are going to have 200 yards rushing against Dallas. Uh, Joe Mixon is a problem. But you know what? So's Chase. So's T. Higgins. To some degree, so's Njoka. They, they, they present problems for you. There's no question. Steven, San Francisco pounds the ball. Why can't we? The Cowboys reflected on that playoff loss, thinking the same thing, Steven. They have a wide receiver who runs tougher than we do. They have a wide receiver who plays like he's a linebacker. Why don't we get some linebackers who play like they're linebackers or, or whatever? Uh, and I don't know that we can count up, rack up the Sunday night loss to a lack of toughness or a lack of big boyness. You you did with Zeke get five yards of carry on, on, on 10 carries. That's a start. Maybe. Kenneth Easley, $5 pitch in. My wife can name three Cowboys. Dak. Zeke and Tyron. But even she said that steel guy's playing like crap. For her to notice, that's bad. Well, did, did he have penalties on three straight plays and four in the game? Kenneth Easley, by the way, I hope uh, you don't need a babysitter. Bring the kids and we'll see you tonight, six o'clock at Cantino Laredo in Frisco. Bill Bates, not the real one. To be honest, I'm fine with Dak not playing. It's not like he's doing much anyway. I know, but he. <laughs> he was slated to do a little more than he did in that game. And if he was playing this weekend, if he was healthy, he would be slated to score more than seven points. I think the Cowboys were favored by one at one point in this game. Mike B, with the way we looked last week, are we as unified as Jerry and everybody tells us? That's not so much a Jerry thing. That's a locker room thing. We're special. We got a special bond. It's a brotherhood. This team says that really well. This team is really good at the podium on that, led by Dak, of course. But every team says that. And then half of them go lose on Sunday. Ryan, stick a fork in him. In week two? Well, that's no fun. Jamming. It's called choking. Adam, Kellen doesn't trust the offensive line, so they dink and dunk, which doesn't seem like a terrible idea given the state of this offensive line. But yeah, you combine dink and dunk with the inability of the wide receiver to get separation downfield. And the next thing you know, good thing Zeke got five yards of carry so we could have some yards at all. Ryan, do you want to pay $5 for a ticket to go see Cooper Rush? No, but that's not what people are going to be doing on Sunday. Uh, this is Seinfeldian. You 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 root for the uniforms. Brian Gilly, look at Denver and Green Bay. They look bad on offense too. In fact, it's a funny thing. The Cowboys, Sports Illustrated did the power ranking. Cowboys are ranked 24th. Whatever. We'll talk about this later today too. 
Okay. Except there's teams that won their first game, like four of them, that are behind the Cowboys. How how do how does a winning team rank worse than a losing team? Meanwhile, Green Bay is ranked seventh by Sports Illustrated. Green Bay looked like Dallas, but Green Bay is ranked seventh and Dallas is ranked 24th. I'll close with this with a reminder again. Uh, Cantino Laredo tonight, six o'clock, Fish Live. Come on, tequila will be flowing. You can bring the family, the best Mexican food in DFW. Uh, it is a, as you know, a DFW classic, Cantino Laredo. You, we, we don't, the, the beauty of this going forward is we don't know. The problem with these rankings is rankings and ratings and power rankings and all that. Uh, we're just guessing. Green Bay is three times better than Dallas. They are. Based on what? I just watched them both their games. Green Bay's terrible. Green Bay right now is terrible. Every bit as terrible as you are. The beauty of the NFL is, unlike in college, where the, where the rankings are literally rankings, coaches poll and blah, blah, media. In the NFL, there's only one ranking that matters. They call it the standings. And the Cowboys look really bad in the standings right now. We'll see if they can fix that this week. See you tonight. And we'll see it. We'll see it to start in a little bit. We'll see you tonight. Fish at six, Cantino Laredo. Be there. Fish out.